Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a thumbs up, by writing a comment, by subscribing, or by telling me what your favorite car is. Even if you can't drive, I think many people have a favorite car. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. This is it's it's a pretty weird news day, but I think you guys are kind of used to that happening every now and again. It says after a week where pump and dumps rattled crypto and fiat markets, things appear to have settled into a groove of growth. What? Across the board, global market cap is up a healthy 6.9% according to data company Nomics, with all projects now worth 1.12 trillion or 15% of gold's total market. Cap. So the cryptocurrency market, for those of you who are currently unaware, is losing its mind in all different types of directions. Uh, Ethereum is posting new all-time highs. I believe it says it's somewhere around here. Nope, it says Bitcoin price analysis. Bitcoin eyes fresh bullish break above 37,000. Uh, Ethereum's rising in price. Bitcoin's rising in price. But as it's doing so, it's incredibly choppy. There's a huge amount of volatility. We've been getting news for the last two days more or so, somewhere around that time frame, that Bitcoin looks like it could potentially be gearing up for a massive move higher. We have been in this uh, channel for a while, and it looks like we are nearing the end of the triangular pennant, and therefore we are looking like we could be smashing past $40,000 once again. At least that's the speculation kind of roaming around, and we typically see this rather... Right before that, we typically see tons of volatility in the market, and I mean, there's a huge lot of it. As Bitcoin is the magnet for the market, everything tends to follow it, but Ethereum is also going through its own situation right now, where I mentioned before, um, while Bitcoin has a trading pair for everything, so does Ether at this point. So Ether is also moving up, I think it's above 1500 or something like that the last couple of hours, which is a fresh, brand new all-time high, absolutely wonderful, but Every single time that something happens to Ether, the other coins also react just as sharply. Even if Bitcoin is slightly going up, things are, it's, if you look at the markets, which we're going to do in, of course, a couple of minutes, it just really looks completely insane because there's no actual direction to anything that's happening right now. Um, Ethereum is heavily in the news today. And I mean, like, absolutely heavy. It says ETH2 becomes third largest staking network as Ether rallies into new all-time highs. The price gains enjoyed by Ether... As it hits record highs, have propelled ETH2 to rank as the third largest network by staked capitalization. That's despite the fact that just 2.09% of Ethereum supply is locked into ETH2 at present. Ether pushed to new all-time highs from 1480. It's currently at 1550 after gaining 12% in the last... You see this? It's wild. The, the, in the entire market, looks like this. We typically have... I mean, you know, there, there, there's always going to be fluctuations in the price. It's never a straight shot up or a straight shot down. But this is like an actual battle in the markets. People, every single time we hit a higher number, people are desperate to try and sell off and bring the price back down. I'm not sure if it's a renewed sense of amount of people who are in the market who are now trading. But it looks... The word isn't unnatural. The word is it looks absolutely volatile with nearly 2.5 million ether currently staked or locked up ethereum 2 staking capitalization equals 3.6 billion dollars so this is also in the news a lot as well we're getting these numbers now floating out into us that doesn't make any sense uh, basically stating that tons of ether is now being locked up more ether is being locked up into the market than we had previously seen before. A lot of the news that we were getting before about Ethereum was that tons of new DeFi projects were being built. And with these new DeFi projects, you have to buy the Ether to be able to lock them up to be able to start the project. So it was a scarcity of Ethereum supply because of DeFi projects. And now we're getting a Ethereum is becoming scarcer because people are locking it inside of the actual Ether, ETH2 excuse me, network to be able to um, get passive income from holding their Ether. What is this one? Ethereum sets new all-time high at 1500 as amount staked on Ether hits 4.3 billion. Yeah, of course, this is, you know, mega major news, if you will. Also, this as well. I, I, I think it's an accumulation of all these things at once. Uh, but I think we're also entering a... You'll see in a couple of minutes. Um, I think people are becoming desperate to sell for whatever reason across the market. And I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's, yeah, hold on. It says Ethereum's price is all blazing guns. 
That is not a phrase. Hitting its new all-time high above 1,500, 50 surging more than 13% as expected. The world's second largest cryptocurrency has finally given a breakout above its previous all-time high and has entered the price discovery mode. Um, where's the actual news? Somewhere around here. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Interestingly, the Ether price rally comes just as Grayscale's Ethereum Trust, or ETHI, it actually says ETHI, buys 25,000 Ether coins worth a massive $37 million soon after resuming fresh investments. As per the data on Bybit, the latest purchase comes in the last 12 hours with ETHI, total holdings surging to 2.96 million Ethers worth around... <laughs> There's no number here. <laughs> it just, they just wrote a dollar sign billion. So their, their Ether under... Asset under management is now $4.5 billion. So I think it's an accumulation of all these things. Uh, there's also some other Ether news, which, of course, we're going to get into. But there's a lot of Ether activity currently taking place. <clears throat> and even last month, uh, we heard nothing about Ethereum. Everything was just Bitcoin focused. And then we started seeing these huge, heavy droplets of investors being like, well, you know, Ether is not that bad. Ether is kind of amazing. I think I'm also going to get into Ether as well. And I guess this is finally the runoff from it. <clears throat> Maybe it just takes a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months for the news to actually finally hit the price. Not really sure what it is. Um, on top of that, of course, we're seeing tons of Bitcoin price predictions. These are never going to end. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Guggenheim CIO talks Bitcoin with CNN. Say six hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin is possible. These are these are rampant. These are these are all over the place. Like I can't tell you how many times a day I see it, and now they're all kind of blending into the same similar numbers. Like before, it was kind of like you're over here, you're completely over here, and there was one outside the room who's trying to make these prices as well. But now it appears that they've all kind of honed in on a three hundred thousand to a six hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Six hundred thousand usually being quoted as next year or the year after. And 200 to 300,000 being quoted at some time uh, this year. This should also come as no surprise because we know that all these institutions are paying very close attention to Bitcoin. It could also be the reason for the, for the price fluctuations as well. This has been noted before, and I told all of you this as well. Uh, these people know how to move markets. And this is currently a situation where, once again, Bitcoin, even if Bitcoin doesn't look like it's poised to become a world currency, Bitcoin is looking like, if Bitcoin is, is supposed to, might, potentially, could be hitting $600,000 next year or the year after. What does that mean for the year 2030? How high will Bitcoin be then? So they're, they're clearly going for the, the long-term, if not a 10-year a term game and trying to make as much money as humanly possible. So no surprise that we keep getting all these major institutions talking about exactly how high that Bitcoin is going to go. It's everywhere, every single day. <clears throat> It's actually hard to get away from it, uh, even when I don't want to talk about where Bitcoin is going to be in the future. We know that it's going to hit these numbers, but I think um, when you put it out into the air, it seems like, I guess for people who aren't into crypto, it seems a bit impossible. Like, that's not going to happen. Keeping in mind, there were people who thought that Bitcoin would never pass by a dollar, that it would never pass by $100. There were people who said that Bitcoin could not get past the thousand dollars it just actually wasn't possible like there wasn't enough demand in the world even if everyone had purchased bitcoin by the time we got to ten thousand, people were like well that's it you know expect it to hit zero so it's kind of that same exact trend over and over once we hit it then people go well of course we can hit it and then by the time we get to six hundred thousand, people will say three million dollar bitcoin in 10 to 15 years and people will go no it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not possible until it's actually possible and then you kind of get the hint um anyway that's the beginning news if you will of the video and let's move on because there's of course more stuff that we have to go over um now here's the main situation right here i make videos every day sometimes twice sometimes thrice and you've seen me make multiple videos i had trouble finding this actual news for those of you who don't know what it is Apparently, um, the CME, the, Sh the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, they're launching Ether futures in about a week. I'm shrugging because I don't remember reading this in the last four, five, six weeks at all. No news about it, but alas, you know, it actually is happening. So for those of you not looking at the screen, it says JP Morgan says Chicago Mercantile Exchange Ether futures. Futures, wow. 
futures can lead to negative price dynamics similar to Bitcoin in 2018. I'm going to give you the full rundown. And none of this is actual uh, tinfoil hat. None of this is a conspiracy. This is all th these are things that actually happened. And I'm going to show you the, the, the sequence of events. Ethereum's price has rallied all the way to a new all-time high above 1550 levels and money in a move back to buy new purchases from Grayscale. There's a lot of frenzy building up around the surge in Ether prices with the launch of Ether futures in a week's time. However, JP Morgan and some other players think that the excitement around the CME Ether futures launch may soon fizzle out. Nikolaus Pani Grotzglu, I haven't heard that name in a while, wow, geez. Global market strategist with JP Morgan Chase and Co. said that Ether futures can lead to negative price dynamics. Ethereum has already surged eight times over the last year. Besides, the craze around decentralized finance has already skyrocketed the use of Ether by many fold times. Also not a phrase. So for those of you who do not know, who were not here, remember, so I said in the last video, we get so much news every single day, I think it's actually quite difficult for us to retain a large amount of it. A lot of it slips through the cracks, a lot of it gets overshadowed by other news that we had. If we had negative, or relatively negative, negative, kind of news, anything that's positive or it really shines a light above it, uh, we kind of forget the bad stuff, if you will. In 2017, Bitcoin's price was on a rocket. There was no stopping it. I think by the time we got to summer, I think prices had pulled back a tiny bit and there was kind of this speculation, well, you know, we we still hit 6,000. That's a lot more than we were before because the previous high before that was 1,200. What started happening was is that this, this similar frenzy that we have right now, exactly what you're experiencing, exactly what you're feeling, this, this, this sentiment, this hype, this rush that you've been feeling for the last couple of months, in the cryptocurrency space, I think was even hyper magnified in 2017. So what what and the point is, so many people started getting into the market that tons of people were actually buying Bitcoin, buying anything that they could into the market. This is why we had coins going from half of a penny to three dollars and sixty cents. Things going from nine hundred to twenty thousand. Ethereum was four dollars, and then rocketed up to one thousand two hundred. Like these these gains are absolutely insane. We already had calls back in 2014 and 15 that Bitcoin was positioning itself then to be a world reserve currency. It made no sense to a lot of people. Bitcoin's at $200. What are you talking about? That's never going to happen. Bitcoin can't do that. By the time we got to 2017 and we hit 10,000 and every new station was talking about it. It wasn't like a, remember when we were talking about before how Bitcoin like was skyrocketing in price and we heard about it nowhere in mainstream news. I don't like that term, but you understand like it, it was really nowhere. Um, at that point, we started getting news from a couple of countries uh, who are still doing terribly economically that they were going to start banning Bitcoin. Why were they banning Bitcoin? Because they had metrics from these companies who had started to appear that people within their borders were buying up huge amounts of Bitcoin. People were using, uh, what's the, there was an app. I, don't, I, I, I can't remember what it's called right now because my brain is going too fast. There was an app that you could download and you could like meet someone in the street in a cafe or something like that and basically hand them physical cash and they would scan your phone and you'd get the Bitcoin kind of this way, which was also really crazy because we kept on seeing the metrics happening in across South America and across Africa and across parts of Asia and also in the States of people doing this. And it was like skyrocketing every single day. So the idea then became, by the time we hit $14,000, that Bitcoin was dangerous. This is when all that news started coming out, and the reason a lot of you took years to actually get into the cryptocurrency market were because governments were making sure to say, oh, it's terrible, you got to watch out, criminals are using it. Remember all, all, all the stuff we used to even joke about before when uh, Warren Buffett was like, don't touch it, don't use it, it's only used by ladies of the night. Like These things, I, I joke about them in some sort of way, but these things all actually happened. They were using and saying these things on the news. What's a really good way to get people to not use do something is say we're thinking about making it illegal. It's horrible. Don't touch it. Only criminals use it. And therefore, everyone goes, well, I, I kind of want to stay away from it. The same exact news that we had many other times before that there were many African nations who uh, Bitcoin was completely legal. But someone in their central bank around the time that Bitcoin was five, six, seven thousand. Keeping in mind, the people who were getting into Bitcoin were the people who should have gotten into Bitcoin in the first place. These are the people who didn't have a lot of money, the people who were, they weren't impoverished, but they weren't wealthy by any means. 
So if you tell them that they can get something that's going to 10x their money when they're already making scraps wherever they might be working, it becomes a very attractive form of investment to be able to get inside of. So central banks around the world were like, don't touch it. It's terrible, blah, 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 blah. And people actually thought that Bitcoin was illegal within their country when it wasn't. It was simply someone from the central bank went on TV at four o'clock in the afternoon and was like, don't do it. The point being, by the time Bitcoin was really rocketing up, there was no real way to bet against Bitcoin. And I, and, I, and I give you the strongest air quotes in the entire world. We lived in a world at this point where Tether had just appeared. Tether was the only stable coin. Whenever you needed to get out of an altcoin, your only option was to go to the magnet. You went into Bitcoin. There was no other option. There were no stable coins. There was no kind of this. And we had even more fluctuations in the market because of this. So if Bitcoin was looking like it was having a bad day, altcoins would start to surge because you had no other place to put your Bitcoin money except into altcoins. This is kind of just how it was. So the point being, I had to give you the history lesson and let you know exactly where all of this is coming from and why JP Morgan is saying this, comes from the fact that by the end of 2017, the news was going crazy. Bitcoin is at 18,000. Bitcoin is definitely going to hit 30,000. Bitcoin is going to hit $40,000. What happens when Bitcoin hits 50,000? And this is when we started having the, the Swiss banks basically saying, hey, if Bitcoin hits 250,000, it can take over the US dollar. As you might imagine, that is not a very good thing to hear for people who use the US dollar or who print the US dollar, who create the US dollar and tell other people, hey, you have to also use the US dollar. So like I said, it's not a, uh, a tinfoil hat moment. All of this stuff actually happened. The Trump administration acted to deflate the Bitcoin bubble of 2017 by allowing the introduction of futures products. This was said by a former official on that Monday. This is from 2019. This is why I said, we get news and sometimes we forget that it happened. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And we kind of go, eh, you know, as time ends up passing on. Christopher Giancarlo, who left the U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission at the end of his five-year term as chairman in April, told Coindesk in an interview, he said, one of the untold stories of the past few years is that the CFTC, the Treasury, the SEC, and the National Economic Council director at the time, Gary Cohn, believed that the launch of Bitcoin futures would have the impact of popping the Bitcoin bubble, and it worked. This was coordinated. The idea was you introduce, we had no, everyone was trying to get Bitcoin futures, Every uh, physically settled Bitcoin futures. This is why when back to launch, it was like, whoa, they're actually transferring Bitcoin back and forth. Everyone was trying to get a, um, an ETF. It was mainly like mega companies and the Winklevoss twins. It was that if you had Bitcoin derivatives that were using Bitcoin, this would cause Bitcoin's price to continue rocketing higher. It was kind of the idea. The government's idea was, if we launch or allow Bitcoin futures, what does it allow people to do? What's the whole GameStop fiasco about? You allow people to short the market. There was no real way to short Bitcoin at the time. There was no institutional grade level, big, gigantic, monolithic way to be able to bet against Bitcoin. You could swap your Bitcoin into altcoins. You could go on TV and say that Bitcoin's bad. Don't do that. But how do you do this in a, in a very clear cut way? Because with futures, you can go short and you can go long. You can say, yeah, Bitcoin's definitely going to hit 35,000. But what happens when you have coordinated strikes from around the world with people launching something, basically saying, yeah, you know, this is going to be a great day for Bitcoin. And you allow these institutions who've been frothing at the mouth looking for a way to short Bitcoin because Bitcoin destroy Bitcoin destroys a lot of companies. Bitcoin destroys faith in the U.S. dollar. Bitcoin destroys faith in fiat currencies. Bitcoin destroys faith in gold. What happens when your company looks like it could crumble because of this currency that's only been around for 9, 10 years at this point? You do anything you can to launch something like futures, which will allow you to long it, but everyone's going to short it. And what happens when you short something that's at $20,000? It falls down to 3000 so like I said, it's not a tinfoil hat moment. We know that this actually took place. And this is the reason why JP Morgan said the same exact thing about Ether futures. A lot of the hype is around when we have Ethereum futures, it will allow institutions to go, hey, that's Ethereum. I heard about that. Let me buy into it as well. What's probably going to end up happening is, and I think there's a, a weird shift. I don't think it's going to be exact. 
is that these companies are going to get in and try and short it as much as possible for a number of reasons. Either they're going to be trying to destroy it because they may, listen, this is all business. This is all money. They may be into the cryptocurrency space themselves and they may be trying to short and or destroy Ether because they have a coin that's coming out. They're attached to another project who's supposed to rival Ethereum. It could be a million and one things or simply because they want to try and make some shorting money, which I think is going to be quite interesting. If we see Ethereum's price fall and we get indications of who these companies are who are shorting Ether and the people from Wall Street bets, the people from Reddit or anybody else really figure out who they are, they're going to be wiped out. They're going to be obliterated in about a week's time. It's going to be very fast. It's going to be very dramatic and people are going to learn very quick not to short it if people find out who these companies are. One of the reasons why Bitcoin dropped so fast was because of all this fear and was because of Bitcoin was being used, but it was being used more speculatively. We did not have a situation in 2017, Ether was just, hey, in about four years time, I'm going to be a world computer. I think we had 20, maybe 30 ICOs built on top of it. Now we have hundreds of coins built on top of Ethereum. There's an entire ecosystem that we can't see because it's in the air and it's all digital and stuff like that. But I think if there is any type of a pullback, I don't think it'll last that long because we do have tons of trusts around the world who are actually buying up Ether as well. So it's going to be quite a fascinating thing. I also have this one up here. For those of you who are not looking at the screen, this is also from 2017. And, and this didn't make any sense at the time. It says CME Group's Leo Melamed said, we'll tame Bitcoin. How everything has come completely full circle. They coordinated to make sure Bitcoin's getting way too hot. And, and even for me, a lot of times, and I don't know if it's simply because of the way that I was raised or the way that I was taught to think about or seeing how billionaires treat other people. It's, it's, fa it's fantastically amazing that so many people around the world can be making money from a new asset class. And all you think about is I'm losing money. So I have to make sure that we tame Bitcoin or that people can short Bitcoin or that Bitcoin gets destroyed to make sure that I have my money and not the hundreds of millions of people around the world who were, I don't even think it's getting rich, but they were still making really good money more than they were actually making from working a normal nine to five. So, that's the other really popular Ether news is that Ethereum futures are going to be launching within the next seven days, give or take somewhere around that time frame. Um, but we'll see where this takes us because we know for a fact that governments will do what is in their best interest and they don't really care about anything else uh, because it's not them. So, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Um, anyway, that's all the futures news, if you will. And without further ado, let's move on. In unsurprised, is that a big pillow? What is he standing on? That, that looks terrible. It's like a big couch. Um, MicroStrategy has apparently purchased more Bitcoin. They purchased another 295 Bitcoin per another, I assume, an SEC filing on Tuesday. They paid, apparently, they put $10 million further into the Bitcoin market. And bought 314 Bitcoin less than two weeks ago per Coindesk's prior reporting. So the news is that uh, MicroStrategy bought another $10 million worth of Bitcoin. No one should be surprised. They said it before that they'll keep doing it again. And now they hold 71,079 Bitcoin. It's a, lot, it's, a lot, it's a lot of Bitcoin. And that's a huge amount of Bitcoin. It's not as much as uh, what's their faces. Grayscale, they hold uh, like 600, 700,000 and they're going for like a million Bitcoin. But that's still a huge significant amount. So they bought another $10 million worth of Bitcoin. On top of that, no one gasp, no one clutch your pearls, because we all knew this was coming. The US SEC today approved a filing by global investments and advisory firm Guggenheim to invest $500 million, $500 million into Bitcoin via digital assets manager, Grayscale. Guggenheim's proposed SEC filing to buy $500 million in Bitcoin via the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has officially just become effective. And there's the filing right there from Blockport. According to the US SEC filing, 
Guggenheim submitted an amendment proposal on the 27th of November of last year to allow the firm's $5 billion macro opportunities fund to gain exposure by investing 10%, 10% of its net asset value into Grayscale. The amendment said the Guggenheim Macro Opportunities Fund may seek investment exposure to Bitcoin indirectly through investing up to 10% of its net asset value in Grayscale, a privately offered investment vehicle that invests in Bitcoin. To the extent that the fund invests in GBTC, it will do so as through the subsidiary. So Guggenheim has purchased half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Like I said, no one be surprised. This, this news should make you destructively bullish not a phrase but you get what i'm saying every single day all the time and 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 we forget about them how could you how could anyone remember all the news that you've been hearing every single day for the last couple of months but rest assured every single day we keep getting news that these mega companies are buying up huge amounts of bitcoin that's why whenever bitcoin falls i'm like oh, okay that's cool well you know might be time to buy the dip because they're not they're 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 not stopping their their buying spree anytime soon, and they they've all said this. They said no, we're, we're, we're going to keep on buying Bitcoin, and I think at this point we should know that the goal is, and not that uh, I don't want to say that they're not greedy, but logic tells us if they are rich, they're trying to get richer, and I assume the end goal is if Bitcoin is potentially going to be a worldwide currency or used and a store of value and all this other stuff. You want to have as much as possible. Is that a that's a weird smiley face? Give me your with the anyway. Um, yeah, Guggenheim five hundred million dollars. Assumption they're probably going to be buying more within the next month, next two months. We're going to get more news about that. Bitcoin's price should be well over eighty thousand dollars at this point. There's no actual reason. The fact that we hit forty two thousand. Weeks ago, based off of I, I I forgot what the actual hype was that moved us along, and the people were like, "Oh, the market got way too hot. The market has to pull back." Where, Wh why, why exactly did Bitcoin have to pull back in price? Because because the future said so. Because a rich person behind the desk said so. Because we're used to markets, other markets being garbage. Like, have you seen anything being adopted and accumulated this fast ever before? In mass, like in mass, every single day. Anyway, uh, ba -da -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. that's the Guggenheim Trust News, and let's move on. It was like a banshee howl. What was that? Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. It says, Ether, together with stable coins running on the Ethereum network, settled over $1.6 trillion in transactions last year. This is according to a report by the team at Consensus, who also pointed out the majority of stablecoin transactions on Ethereum were carried out with Tether. USD coin and DAI. They shared their analysis of Ethereum and stablecoins via the following statement. They said the three largest stablecoins, USDT, USDC, and DAI, have seen such a rise in use in 2020 that they are now responsible for more than for more trade volumes on Ethereum than the assets that pays for computation, Ether itself. Uh, this is major. This is, and I and I'm not sure why today is very Ether focused, but alas, here we are. Um, we had news before, and I think this is it right here. Yeah, it says Bitcoin moved $3.4 trillion in payments in 2018, rivaling Visa and PayPal. And immediately after, that's when we got the news that PayPal was going to be adding Bitcoin to their markets. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm going to show you something in a minute. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, it said, why should regulators take note? The news that we had 2019, and I think maybe even 2020, was that Bitcoin was doing trillions of transactions on its blockchain. Just Bitcoin alone. So the news that we're getting now is that Ethereum is no longer a place to just simply create your coin or to put this on top of it. It's now a, a multi-trillion dollar network where tons of transactions are happening. The longevity, I, 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 I forgot the actual metric. It was somebody who said this on a podcast years ago, and it was something that, it was along the lines of like every day that Bitcoin survives is another brick that's being built around the fortress. It was something like that. Like every single day that we see that Bitcoin continues on and doesn't crash, doesn't fall apart, has more people joining the network, the stronger the trust actually gets in Bitcoin. And I think we've gotten to that point for Ethereum as well. Ethereum's transacting trillions of, tra of dollars. We know that it's slow. 15 transactions, I think seven, 15 transactions per second. And it's still going along relatively fine. We're not hearing much news about how slow things are, but things are, are continuing 
to kind of chug along. I think the only negative news that we get is like the high gas fees. And I think people who are writing those articles simply don't have any ether or just never really bet on ether. So yeah, um, Ethereum's doing incredibly well. I expect this to only continue as time ends up going on. We're going to have more people building on top of this as well. Um, yeah, if, the, if this is just Ether and just stable coins, I wonder what the cumulative number is also for the DeFi projects who are on top of Ethereum. Like, I wonder exactly how much value was transacted on Ether alone. Very fascinating. And this is probably why we keep seeing all the institutions who are like, hey, we got to start buying more Ether. Anyway, that's more Ether news because there's a whole slew of it. And let's move on. And to finish things off, um, we're getting this pattern. Pattern is a nice word of very wealthy people who are talking about the cryptocurrency space and how amazing it is and how they're thinking thinking of getting into it and how they're looking at it and how all these other things. It even says it, uh, Ray Dalio, Elon Musk, and Mark Cuban are weighing in on the growing crypto market. Assumption, they've probably been in the market for a while, just an assumption. Um, every other bank, every other, every other institution who's getting into Bitcoin or talking positively about Bitcoin now has been into Bitcoin since 2014, 2017. So I can only assume other wealthy people have taken notice a while ago. <clears throat> um, I don't even know the real point. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting this really weird um, sentiment in the cryptocurrency market that a lot of people are selling, a lot of people are jumping out of the market. I'm not really sure where this is kind of coming from, but just make sure that you understand every time you sell, these people are buying. It's no longer a, I mean, it still is, it's no longer a when you sell, someone else buys. We know what the wealthiest people on the planet are doing right now. Even the ones who aren't saying this out loud, we know that they're buying up huge amounts of Bitcoin. Just keep in mind, keep it in your head, um, all the things that are currently taking place within our ecosystem. And I and I uh, made that noise before when I was over here. It says Bitcoin moved $3.4 trillion in payments, rivaling Visa and PayPal. And I, and, and I thought the PayPal part was funny because PayPal eventually added Bitcoin to their platform. They were like, you know what? We got to do it. You know, Bitcoin's amazing. We got to add it. And then I thought it was really funny because the last tab that I had open uh, was the other thing that we had a couple days ago. For those of you who missed it, is apparently Visa is going to be adding, it says cryptocurrency trading onto their platform, onto their network and cryptocurrency payment. So I thought that was a really weird full circle that Bitcoin outshined Visa and PayPal. And now they're both adding Bitcoin to their platform. Once again, also doesn't make a lot of sense as to why Bitcoin would fall in price. It's like we, we, we know that this news is true. And is going to happen. And there's still pullbacks in price. And the pullbacks in price are meant to make you think that you should be selling your cryptocurrencies. How many times? It's been about three times in the last eight weeks that we've gotten news. Every time there was a major pullback in the price. What happened the next day? What news did we get? Whales had been buying. The next day after that? Oh, it was MicroStrategy. It was Grayscale. It was this company. It was so-and-so. They bought the dip. So... Just keep all of this in mind. Um, Bitcoin is here to stay. It is going to reach for the stars. Um, it already has the stars because, you know, they used to call stars celebrities. And so the point is, um, yeah, just keep your head up and subsequently also keep your head down <laughs> on the market because it's a very fascinating time. The, the amount of adoption is completely through the roof. Uh, I'm glad, and I think it also quite funny. Remember all the people who were shouting at the top of their lungs before that Bitcoin had to drop down to 1,200? 1,200, not 12,000. There were people who were saying that Bitcoin had to touch 1,200 again, or Bitcoin had to fall back down to 4,000 so we could make sure that, that, the, 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 that, that the bull market was legitimate. I'm glad that all these people have locked themselves into a cave somewhere because it's like you have no idea what you're talking about. It's impossible to get this much news all the time about adoption, there's no negative news. There's been no negative Bitcoin news, except for like they're the two governments who are already hyper corrupt, who are trying to make sure that no one in their countries can touch Bitcoin. 
That's it. Across the board, we keep seeing new institutions every single day who are buying huge amounts of it, who are integrating it into this, who are buying up all the supply over and over. So Bitcoin's price being this low makes no sense. I think we will eventually, logically, uh, get to higher price points, but it just kind of is what it is. Um, yeah, I thought this Visa news was very fascinating. <laughs> Can you imagine being in 2015, 16, and 17 and knowing that PayPal and Visa are adding Bitcoin to their platform and then seeing Bitcoin's price fall by 4%? Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Not really. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, two new patrons, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy Allgood, Space Case, <laughs> no, I said it that way, Need a Miracle, Crypto Stahl, George Montoya, Wise Link, Not TMI, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Moher Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight Owl, 242 to the world, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist Cole D3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Rich III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Body Mink Boatface, Anytime Fitness Monks Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigra Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. More and more every single day. I can't thank you enough. I don't know how to say it without sounding completely insane and being like, oh my gosh, thank you. Um, but thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it, especially during a worldwide situation like this is the uh, nicest way of saying it. Thank you to everyone who left a comment. Thank you to everyone who left a thumbs up. Thank you to everyone who is still here. At the memento, Bitcoin's price is 35000 Ooh, 36000 That happened very quick. Currently up by 3%. The fluctuations, man, are completely all over the place. Ethereum is up by 5%, currently at $1,532. XRP is moving up again. I saw a couple of XRP articles uh, talking about the bulls are back somewhere along that line. And I'm like, okay, well, hold it. Hold your horses. Uh, we'll see exactly where this ends up going. Um, who knows? Our market is a weird one. And I think if we get any indication that any Wall Street bets people or somewhere along that line adjacent plan on getting back into our market or signaling or targeting, whatever... It'll be a wild day. Anything else crazy? Litecoin's up by six. Lumens is up by roughly around five. Uh, a lot of the DeFi coins like a day or two ago were really pumping, but I think it's just the Bitcoin magnet now that's bringing everything down because Bitcoin's also, it's like up but down. Doesn't make any sense. Anything else crazy? Nope. Everything's kind of like sideways. Sideways up, sideways down. Who will be tokens up by 9%? Because sure, why not? Yeah, up, down, up, down, up, down. Dash is up by 7%. Luna is up by 16% over the last 24 hours. Avalanche is up by 6 Yeah. We'll see where the rest of the day takes us. I I don't know. It looks like we could dip for like a good 6, 12 hours and then kind of moon back up, if you will. I, I'm mad to myself that I said the word moon. Uh, but Bitcoin should not be down at, at, at any point right now. I think the the only fear that may be flowing through the the market is the the Ethereum futures kind of thing because you'd better believe if there there are tons of people who don't like our market and there's a reason why they're pushing all this stuff through but um, our market's resilient and you know we don't even get news anymore that Bitcoin futures have expired and what what effect it has on Bitcoin because it makes no sense that they should even affect our market but alas here we are. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly, most certainly, be talking to you all soon. See you!